Okay, Saber. You got this. Everybody's looking at you. They will judge you. They will boo you. Just do your best. Be yourself. Wait, is it rolling? Oh, sweet chaos, it's rolling! Uh, uh, top five overhead side games! Sonic, 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 Mr. Blue Blur, the spike ball of death, and the internet's favorite punching bag. Why must people hate you so? Okay, I see the reasons, but other than those, let's be real here, hating Sonic has become quite the internet tradition at this point. Just say he's a blue piece of shit, and suddenly you're popular with people of the interwebs. But I tend to gain respect without resorting to such trends. Call me a fanboy and label these as guilty pleasures. I'm gonna stick to my guns, damn it. I'm not gonna rage right now, though. It's not professional. I'll wait to unleash my wrath another day. For now, let's look at the Sonic game equivalents of stray semi-adorable puppies and kittens that weren't cute enough for fans to not beat to your death. Sounds cruel, don't it? Now, I want to do this right, because when you're dealing with a fan base that's more split than Eggman's IQ presentation rate, you don't want to fuck up. I have only one rule in effect in this countdown. Only Sonic games I've played. I haven't played them all, but I've played a lot. Enough talk. Let's get this top five started. But first, I cast Flame Shield. That's more like it. <laughs> what? The joke is dead and it doesn't work anymore? Uh -huh. oh, son of a... <laughs> you know, one of the most common complaints for video games nowadays is that the devs are running out of ideas. But let's be honest, there's only so many ways Sonic can jump on heads. But forget jumping, I've got a sword! Okay, I see you there, ready to dislike this video, and write an angry comment. But guys, don't you remember? This is top 5 overhated Sonic games. I'm not saying these are good. I'm saying they get much more hate than they deserve. Sonic and the Black Knights has the blue blur being pulled in the Middle Ages via Final Fantasy summoning, where he grabs himself a sword, some cool looking armor, eh? Eh? I'll stop now. And slashes his way through levels looking to defeat a corrupt King Arthur. Now, the gameplay itself is just an improved version of Secret Rings gameplay. You got your running, jumping, homing, attacking, the eventual boost of speed after every jump, but with a twist. You've got a sharp sword like object, and what do you do with said object? Cut everything in your path! However, even though I love me a good hack and slash, it's still Secret Rings at heart. I mean, it controls slightly better. What with you finally using a joystick to move, and chaos for that, but it's still kinda crappy. What with the inability to backtrack without slowing down harder than chaos in Sonic Battle. I do acknowledge that some portions of this game, like that one Dragon Boss and how some of the other playable characters control, more specifically Nux the Knight, hold this game back quite a bit. But still, it doesn't deserve as much hate as it gets. Honestly, once you get the controls down, it's a bit more fun to play. I mean, come on, Sonic with a sword is kinda cool. Even if the sword itself gives me flashbacks to another infamous talking sword. But yeah, did I mention his sword talks? Sorry, I was too busy chop chop chopping my way through these levels like Young Link with a sugar rush to give a shit. 
<laughs> oh, if only I could do this to those mantis bagniks. Then the world would be a better place. Edge, the one element of any form of media that has such split opinions amongst those who come across it. It can be either totally badass or laughably ridiculous. And for me in this case, it's kind of both. I know what you're thinking. This isn't a Sonic game. And I say, Run! It has Sonic in it. It references other Sonic games. Almost all the colorful characters of the Sonic cast are in it. It's a Sonic game in my book. If not in yours, too bad my list. Shadow the Hedgehog has you playing as the title character with video game and anime cliche number 35. Amnesia. And the goal is to complete different objectives in order to uncover Shao's past and have him realize just who the fuck he is. The gameplay is the most controversially touchy subject in the series. It's basically playing as Shadow and Sonic Heroes, but with the added bonus of wielding weapons. <gasps> and not just any weapons, guns and lots of them. You got your pistols, SMGs, rifles, explosives, etc, etc, etc. Oh man, I need to lay down. There's just so much. Maybe it's my inner American talking, but I kinda like the inclusion of guns. It just feels satisfying to shoot Eggman in the face every now and again. Not to mention the morality system. Yeah, I was just gonna talk about the guns all day, did ya? Nope. This game has all that and more for you edgelords out there. In each level, there are multiple objectives corresponding with different characters, and completing each objective can set you on a path of good, evil, or the road between. Also, you see those two big, long, sensational gauges? Those are known as the Chaos Gauges. Each one gets filled depending on your actions within a level. If you're a good little ultimate life form, you get to use Chaos Control, which allows you to fly over most obstacles and skip parts of any level. But if you're basically an asshole to the good guys, you get to use Chaos Blast. And sweet chow in heaven, if this was a 2D game, this would be a freaking screen nuke. I really love how the morality system functions here. I mean, this is the only game where you can say fuck off to your least favorite Sonic characters when they ask for help. However, this game isn't all Edge Paradise and Michael Bay. There are some flaws here and there. A complaint I do agree with is the over-reliance of the weapons. Sure, I love me some guns, but sometimes I just want to kill enemies the old-fashioned way. However, that's impossible since they nerfed the homing attack harder than Meta Knight in Smash Bros. 4. Shadow himself controls slightly better than heroes, but it's still very slippery at times. And getting an A rank is really hard in this game. Probably the hardest A ranks in the entire series. However, these problems don't get in the way of my fun. Now where's Big? I've got a bullet with his name on it. You know, in video games, I love me some teamwork. Whether you're fighting a common enemy or working together to win a contest of sorts, it feels good to win with a friend rather than by yourself. And this game is a perfect example of this. After all, one big ball of death is better than two little ones. I have no idea how it happened, but for some strange reason, people not like this game. In fact, reviews show that episode 1 was better. 
just how my brain hurting so much. Sonic 4 Episode 2 has Sonic and Tails run around some new areas when suddenly Big Bad Robotnik is causing trouble again. It's as basic as Sonic games can get with plot. Beat Eggman, save the cute little animals, happy ending. This game has a lot going for it. Back to basics design, pretty damn good music, tight controls, the return of Metal Sonic, and having Tails as an in-game partner after years of just sitting his damn plane, building gadgets, or just doing jack shite. And what a return the two-tailed fox made, now giving Sonic tag abilities, such as the old school flying assist, a bigger spin dash hitbox, and the inspiration for the Kong Pow and Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. Oh, but the bells and whistles don't end there. No siree. Some ports, there's online multiplayer. So you and a long distance friend can play together. There's not much else to say about this game, it's just that simple. Honestly, I really don't understand the hate this game gets. Is it just Sonic fans being unsatisfied like usual? Is it just retro and modern purists hating it for combining the two eras? I don't know, but I still love this game, and I know others agree with me on this. I don't know about you guys, but last time I checked, Sonic isn't the most serious character most of the time. He's a smartass, he's snarky. He'll make a joke about his enemies or even his allies when the opportunity arises, cheesy or otherwise. So, tell me, why is it when he does it here, it suddenly ruins this game for everyone? <music> to some, it's the comeback. To others, it furthered the fall. To me, I don't care it's good. Sonic Colors is probably one of the most infamous Sonic games when it comes to mixed opinions from the fans. Sonic and Tails get some new voices, there's a new gimmick of the the Wisps, all that seriousness from other games have been replaced by so bad good jokes, and you either love it all or hate it all. The main plot of this adventure is simple. Ivo built himself an interstellar amusement park fueled by alien life energy. And he apparently just lets worst enemies take an elevator right to it. Now, Sonic has to free the Wisps, beat Eggman, and shut down another PETA nightmare. The gameplay goes a bit like this. Race to the finish! But if you want to look at the details, I guess there are the occasional boss battles in Red Rings. However, the Wisps are the bread and butter of the gameplay, transforming Sonic into multiple forms. From a living laser beam? to a big cube thing. Yeah, that's uh, that's strange. As you can probably tell, I like this game. Sure, it's not the best Sonic game, but it's all right. I mean, the same engine was used for Sonic Generation's modern Sonic stages, and most people love those. The gameplay is smooth, the music is awesome like always, and the story is just old-fashioned Sonic vs. Eggman over a group of small defenseless creatures. Aside from the hit-or-miss wish transformations, constant 2D sections, and the cheesy humor, this is a good game and worth playing. I wouldn't completely recommend it, but I don't mind going on this roller coaster a few more times. Did I seriously like that? So we've talked about some hit or miss games here, and yeah, I might not be the best person to talk about them. The number one is a game that I personally need to talk about, because it deserves none of the hate it gets, for almost every reason people hate it. It's what I believe to be the closest Sonic Team has ever come to a perfect Sonic game. And on that note, I'm tough and fluffy. Who gives a shit? Can you blame me? No 
No, seriously. Can you really blame me? This game gets the most undeserved hate I've ever seen. Let's look at the story, shall we? It starts off with some good old-fashioned Sonic vs. Eggman. In space! A boost here, a mech there, some super Sonic action, and wait. The fuck? Did Evo just break the fucking planet? And suddenly giant demon. Oh wait, he's gone. Okay. Man, the chaos almost aren't looking so good. Sad niche. Well, that just happened. Also, we got Navi's furry cousin along for the ride. Because that's a thing, apparently. Long story short, Ivo breaks planet, sucks away the power of the MacGuffin, Sonic must restore both, and kick Ivo's ass. Now, many questions have been asked over the years. Boxers or briefs? Apples or oranges? But the one we ask here is speed or strength. Personally, I prefer both as long as I get the job done. However, a majority of the Sonic fanbase isn't so easy going with this decision. They prefer the high speed platforming of the daytime stages rather than the slow puzzle solving beat em up styled nighttime stages. Why do they hate the Werehog so much? Here are the main complaints I've heard and how I'd respond. It's too slow, Sonic's supposed to be fast. But uh, what about those slow stages in the beloved Sonic 1? Sonic looked ridiculous as a werehog. He's a walking, talking, blue hedgehog with Michael Jackson sneaks and a 90s kid attitude. The werehog is just a god of war clone. Okay, stop right there. Just because a game is similar to another doesn't mean it's a clone game. Is Banjo-Kazooie a clone because Super Mario 64 came before it? No. No it is not. I rest my case. But the Werehog isn't the only reason people hate on it. Nah, those retro purists never give modern sign games a break. And this is no exception. Boost meter, modern design, full voice actors, this is as modern sign as you can get. Uh, let's forget about the stupid reasons people hate this game and look at the actual positives and negatives. Let me start by saying, if anyone wants a fast Sonic game, well, <laughs> this is your game. Sonic is the fastest he's ever been in this game. Just look at this! I don't know whether I should enjoy the speed or be afraid it might make my console explode. Be warned, however. As this game slows down as that sun sets. Hello, Mr. Fuzzy Wuzzy. Can I get a hug? Okay, never mind. I think it's pretty obvious that I like Sonic's nighttime alter ego. He's big, he's fierce, and he doesn't jump on heads, he knocks them off. Yeah, those claws and spike shoes aren't for show. Watch your back, Eggman. Sonic is coming, and he's not happy. For once, I'm glad some evil scientists made a monster. Now, beat em up fix aside, this game isn't perfect. Certain parts of the game, like the tornado stages and Eggman Land are poorly executed, but aren't enough to make me hate it. In fact, if Sega were to fix or remove those parts, I'd call this the perfect modern Sonic experience. The gameplay is smooth, the soundtrack is my favorite of the franchise, well, its own forces. The level designs are just gorgeous, and the story is easy to understand even for newcomers, as long as you pay attention and actually give a shit. Yeah, it's that easy. It's just a great Sonic game, and if you want to get into the modern Sonic games, I highly recommend Sonic on HP your starting point. I'm Save the Wolf, and if you still think the Werehog is a stupid idea, why was it so cool when Link turned into a wolf?
Thank you.